Speaker Corcoran once again trying to bully his legislative colleagues with a devious scheme to hold the education budget hostage. The bill on everyone's mind this week is what folks in Tallahassee call a train bill, HB 7055. The House has cobbled together dozens of unrelated bills into this monster bill. Tucked into its 198 pages are 58 separate statutes addressing everything from issues affecting school boards, vouchers, student testing, union busting, principal programs, charter schools, tort liability, web-based efficiency, cell phones, and reading curriculum. What's worse, more than half of the issues have never been vetted by a single education committee. HB 7055 does nothing to address some of the challenges and some of the problems that we have in public education. It continues to bring an all-out assault on teachers, uh, educational support professionals, our students, and our communities. FEA President Joanne McCall testified in the House Appropriations Committee against it, calling legislators out on their inability to follow the rules. The Florida Constitution forbids the combination of multiple subjects in a bill, stating, Every law shall embrace but one subject and matter properly connected therewith, and the subject shall be briefly expressed in the title. The range of this bill is ridiculous. What does Medal of Honor Day have to do with a lobby ban for appointed school superintendents? What does the latest attack on the, on the bargaining rights of the instructional personnel in our schools have to do with forcing school districts to give away unused property to charter schools? It appears log rolling is becoming the standard for doing legislative work in this state, rather than taking up the majority of policy issues on their own merit. If the ideas are so great, if they are so great, they should advance or fall on their own merits rather than being lumped together in a take it or leave it package. I urge you, the members of this committee, to uphold the Constitution and vote no on HB 7055. The bill passed the committee along party lines. It will be heard by the full House. Speaker Corcoran raised the stakes even higher when he included a provision in the state budget bill that makes next year's funding for Florida's public schools, the entire FEFP, contingent on the passage of his priorities in HB 7055. Remember, HB 7055 includes language on using sales tax to fund vouchers for unaccountable private schools and decertifying instructional personnel unions if they fall below the 50% membership threshold. What we learned late last night was that Corcoran has put out his proviso language for the budget. And what he has done is essentially he's tied the FEFP, which is how we fund our schools, so how we pay for the buildings, our salaries, how we do everything in our schools, is uh, contingent upon the passage of 7055 or some form of it, which means that's going to create a huge problem. And it's also in proviso language, which means it cannot be amended once it gets to the floor. So it's a vote up or a vote down. Our union plays a critical role in advocating for our educators. We make sure your voice is heard in the Capitol, united for our public schools. I believe in the importance of being a union member because I recognize not only in history the importance of unions and how they advocate for everyone, but I've seen firsthand what our union has done to advocate for all of the teachers in Miami-Dade County Public Schools, as well as for all of our students, and I think that that's essential. We are strength in numbers. They're the ones who fight for us whenever there is an issue, or even if it's not an issue, just to give us that peace of mind that there's someone always in our corner to advocate for us. I would encourage someone who is not a member of the union to join because the union bargains on our behalf as far as our salaries and our health care benefits or other benefits. They provide protection for us that wouldn't be offered otherwise. The stakes have never been higher for our students and our profession. It's absolutely critical that all members contact their legislators and sound the alarm. HB 7055 will hurt our students. Malala Yousafzai, the youngest ever recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize, once said, I raise my voice not so that I may shout, but that those without a voice can be heard. Raise your voice for the almost three million students who choose to attend Florida's public schools. Raise your voice for your colleague who works in your building and maybe also works another job or two but still can't afford to pay rent at the end of the month. Raise your voice and let your 
representatives, let your senators know that we will not tolerate any longer their attacks on Florida's teachers, Florida's education professionals, and public education. When Act 10 first happened, um, it was just a shock. I had never been treated like that in my life. Being a teacher for that long and giving and giving and giving for that long and, and never really expecting to get paid a lot to do it. But to have Act 10 pass so quickly and have the media in the state of Wisconsin, which I taught in Wisconsin because it has such a high reputation of education, to have the media and the legislation in Wisconsin all of a sudden spin it that we were union thugs just in the profession for money. It was, it was a shock. As a 30-year teacher with a master's degree, my representative thinks I'm despicable because I want, I teach in Wisconsin and want to earn a wage and have benefits. Because this isn't about Republicans and Democrats, it's about kids.